a lot of times, a lot of people are 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 kept in the dark. In Hosea, the Bible says, "My people are ruined because of lack of knowledge." A lot of times, this truth about working out our salvation is not thought or is unheard of. If it's unheard of or is, if it's uh, not thought, people are naive. People does not realize that there is a gold mine that is inherent in them. They don't understand the privilege and the high calling. The more we understand who we are, the better our experience as Christians we will have. The lack of knowledge of Christians has always been a, a problem throughout Christianity. People lack knowledge of, the, of certain realities. And my desire today is for you to realize that there is a gold mine in you. There is. Realize who we are, where we are, what we are supposed to do. And it's when we forget these things, like what happened in Israel, they wandered off from God. Now the Bible tells us here, work out your salvation with what? Fear and trembling. You know, I, I was asking myself, why with fear, why with trembling? The word fear there has two. There's two primary usage. One is real fear, in tahot. One is reverence. Some commentators say that this word fear here is reverential. I have a hard time accepting that. I take fear there as fear being afraid. Because if I take that word fear as reverential, I, I cannot I cannot align it with therefore why are you trembling? The fear and trembling the, the, the normal fear in takwa and trembling goes, sa akin it works better. It, it, I, it, I have a better understanding of what is happening. So how does this work? What Paul is saying here, remember, in light of the reality that one day you and I will meet God when all knees will bow and all tongue will confess, that day will be a fearful day for those whose life was not worked out. That day of judgment is a fearful day if you have not worked out your salvation. Therefore, what? Fear and tremble. The wording here is not, the arrangement of word here is not correct. Not, not correct. But the Greek kasi goes, in fear, with fear and trembling, work out your salvation. So the context of working out your salvation should be working it out in fear and trembling. Why? Because if that work, if that working out of your salvation does not pan out, guess what? You're under the mighty hand of God. God's judgment and God's wrath. And that is a fear for and trembling thing. Go to 1 Peter chapter 1, please. First Peter chapter 1, verse 17 says, If you address as father the one who impartially judge according to each man's work, conduct yourselves in fear during the time of your stay on earth. 
if you address Father, the one who partially judge according to each one's work, conduct yourself <coughs> in fear. It's a fearful thing to be under the hands of an angry God. And if salvation is not working out in your life, be fearful and tremble. Go to Revelations, please. Revelation chapter 6. And uh, you know, I always believe in in giving the full precepts of God. Revelation 6 verse 15 says, Then the kings of the earth and the great men and the commanders and the rich and the strong and every slave, every free man hid themselves in caves and among the rocks of the mountain. They said to the mountains and to the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the presence of Him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of wrath has come and who is able to stand? Wow. Isn't that a fearful presence of God? Go to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 says, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat upon it, from whose presence earth and heaven fled away. Imagine, huh? Imagine earth and heaven screaming and flying away from him who sits on the throne, and no place was found for them, and I saw the dead the great and the small standing before the throne and the book were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged from the things which was written in the book according to their deeds and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and the death and hates gave up the dead which were in them and they were judged every one of them according to their deeds then the death and the haze were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Imagine earth and the heavens fled away from the presence of the Lamb who sits on the throne. As they fled away, there was no place for them to hide. John Piper said, If you know God, if you really know God for who He is, in the greatness of His holiness, and justice, and grace, and wrath, you will tremble in His presence. with fear and trembling work out your salvation with fear and trembling prove that your salvation is true because if it proves to be false that's a fearful thing that's a fearful that's why the, in Corinthians, right? Make your salvation sure. Over and over the Bible tells us, make your salvation sure. What is scary about this is this. On our own, we cannot. On our own, we cannot work out our salvation. We have no capability. We have no capacity. We will never meet the requirement in working out our salvation. 
yet God commands us to. So therefore what? Our God seems to be harsh. <clears throat> he is commanding us. He's commanding us something that we cannot do. <clears throat> it's like telling my kid to do something which I know he cannot do, not able to do, has no capacity to do, yet I command him to do it lest he be punished. What would my kid feel? They will be fearful. Why? For sure I will get punished. Because I know I cannot do it. Yet God has commanded us. So does it mean that our God is harsh? Does it mean that our God is unreasonable? Unreasonable? The commandments of God is not harsh. It is not given for us to fail. The commandment of God of working out our salvation is not meant for us to fail. It is meant for, for it to reveal. I want you to remember that. That commandment was meant to reveal. Why do I say that? For it is God who is at work in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Yes, it is impossible for any man to work out something which is not in him. But if the seed of salvation, but if the seed of the gospel is in you, guess, God, guess what? It is God who will work in you. Therefore what? It is not an impossible task. The mining out of our salvation is not an impos impossible task because it is God who is working. That's why the title of our message is the awesome work of God. The awesome work of God is unstoppable. How awesome is that thought? The one who gives us the command to work out is the same one who will supply us the power to obey that command. The all-living God. That's why the Bible says, I can do all things through Him. Not through me. Through Him who strengthens me. What a great God! He gives us the enabling power to do what He commands us to do. Therefore, that command is doable. That command could be a reality. It's great to know that God is on our side. God is with us. You know, God is not only concerned with our hearts, but God is actively working. At this very moment, God is actively working in your life if you are his children. If you are his child. Romans 8.31 says, If God is with us, who can be against us? I want to meet that person. If God is with us, who can be against us? And the word if there again is, is C. 